Talking about astronomy, let's talk about the sun. The sun is a symbol of God. There's some verses that show this. And I'll show it in Psalms 19. Here's a good one. And this shows astronomy. You know, the sun shows going through. Uh, sometimes they show the sun on the vernal equinox in the constellation Aries, crucified on the lamb, the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Every, you know, they would do the idea of that. Or on Yuletide. Think about Christmas, Yuletide. You're here about the Yuletide uh, time. For three days and three nights. See, the days keep on getting shorter and shorter from the, from the summer solstice till the winter solstice. And so what happens for three days and three nights, on the winter solstice, for three days and three nights, the days and nights are the same length. They don't get longer and shorter. And three days later, right around Christmas time, the days start getting longer. Just like Jesus was in the tomb for three days and three nights. Coincidence? I don't think so. I think that's deliberate. God does that to show. It's like a shadow and Ford type. Nature's allegory. And so, you know, they would rejoice the light has come. They show the, the sun dying and the old man winter on the, on the cross of the zodiac, or dying and waning in strength. And they rejoice. Back then, ancient people, the change of the season was very important, very much in rhythm with it. And now with modern technology, air conditioning, and artificial environments, we don't think as much about that. But the point is that uh, that was very important when the, when the winter came and gathering the crops and things like that. And so the sun, getting days getting longer, was a, was a time rejoicing. So they would rejoice the days were getting longer. It was neat. Even they say the constellation of Virgo was on the horizon rising, you know, the one who would bring forth the divine light, the child. So there's all kinds of different things like this. So let's look here, Psalms 19. It's a very big topic, and so we can't really get into this kind of thing. Another book, a good one, talks about a lot of this heathen lore and uh, Christianity mix, even though it's not a Christian work. It's a huge one by Godfrey Higgins called Anacalypsis, probably one of the better ones written. And a lot of his research is pretty good, even though he's not, his, his, his head ain't screwed on tight. He doesn't have acknowledge Jesus Christ. I don't know how anybody can study this stuff and not see the gospel and acknowledge Christ. It's everywhere. <laughs> Psalms 19. Now, a lot of this stuff is shown in the gospel. There's a lot of Christian works on this topic, too, on the astronomy in the Bible. The classic one, the most popular one, is by Seth. And I've seen it in Christian bookstores called The Gospel of the Stars. I defend this, Gospel of the Stars. A lot of people try to attack it, but there are a lot of good men defend it, like James D. Kennedy. I believe he just passed away, the Presbyterian minister in Florida, Coral Ridge, in his evangelist explosion seminar. He believed in the heathen revelation through the astronomy, and he believed what I did. He was a very educated man, academic, like a modern-day Puritan divine. The Gospel of Stars by Sess, a German uh, Lutheran man, turn of the century. Bullinger's Witness of the Stars, which is related to the famous Swiss reformer Bullinger. He was related. And there's one called Nazareth, which is a name for Zodiac in the Bible. What? Zodiac's in the Bible? It sure is. Job 38, I'll read that too. The Ordinance of Heaven, the Nazareth. And there's a bunch of other ones. There's one called The Gospel According to Hercules by Fatner. It just came out about 10 years ago, and I've got it. It's fat as a phone book. He's got a website too, Revelation or something. And I got his book, but it's the same kind of story. I don't think this is accidental, folks. There's a mystery here. That's the mystery of the cross, Okay. And don't let anyone tell me that I'm a pagan. I do not worship nature. I do not worship creation. But I see truth where God has revealed it. And I don't reject truth because some pagan twisted it or doesn't acknowledge the truth of it. Okay? And I don't reject truth because it's not in the Bible. I reject it because it's contrary to the Bible. When the people believe in the supreme God of three and one and dying, rising Savior come, I will accept that. I don't care what culture is from. And we should rejoice in that. Because Jesus Christ fulfilled that. He was a desire of all nations, as the Bible says. Now, Psalms 19. The heavens declare the glory of God. A lot of those books I mentioned are all online, too. You can read them. You can look them up. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showed his handiwork. Day and to night uttered speech, and night and night showed knowledge. So the heavens declare the glory of God. And there's a actual speech. I think there's this literal speech. Our language is based a lot of it on astronomy. Our religion, all religions actually have some astronomical base. And there's a literal language that comes forth. I believe the zodiac signs, the 12 zodiac signs and the deacon signs, show the story of the divine drama of the gospel, becoming the virgin-born divine child, dying, rising Savior, judgment day, and resurrections, all shown in the heavenly hieroglyphic and the picture glyphs of the heavens and the names of the stars that correspond, which later turned on, was perverted into heathen mythology. Point blank. Not coincidence. Day and tonight uttered speech, and night and night showed knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. So this is universal. There's nowhere the voice is there. Their voice is not heard. Their line has gone out throughout the earth. The line. That's the line of the procession of the equinox or the, where the sun uh, passes through the tall sign of the zodiac. A line. It goes right through. I've got a picture I'm going to post up. 
It goes through in a circle through all 12. Almost like if you have a circle and you got like hallways or rooms and it goes in a circle. All 12 signs of the zodiac goes all the way through every year. It's a line. And then he has set a tabernacle for the sun. See, like a tabernacle. It's almost like if you had a circular hallway. It would go all the way around all 12 signs every year, which it does. Apparently, even we know the sun doesn't literally appear that way because of the way the earth's moving. Okay. Which has a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, rejoices as a strong man to run a race. So it's like Jesus, our heavenly bridegroom, He's running through that different signs of the zodiac. That's what it says. A strong man to run a race. And they even have pictures in the uh, Buddha with swastikas on the bottom of his feet. That's a symbol of the sun, by the way. One of the ancient symbols of the sun was also a swastika, of all things. A symbol of light and life. Or it was with wings. They usually picture a swastika with wings. Or Thor's hammer striking the serpent between the eyes. Weird. The word swastika means light and life. The Nazis bastardized and turned it for darkness and death. But it's an ancient indo aryan symbol. It's Semitic. It's on the Egyptian crosses, Chaldean crosses, on the priest. All kinds of weird things with crosses. Cross is not something new to Christianity. And people might be shocked for that. But we're not going to reject the idea of Jesus dying on the cross or a dying rising God because the heathens have some kind of weird stories. Okay? Let's stand on some solid ground here. And I'll read the other verse about, this, uh, about the sun with wings. Okay. The light has gone out throughout the earth and the words until they said it's happening out for the sun, which is a bridegroom coming out of the chamber rejoices as a strong man that run a race. His going forth is from one end of the heaven and a circuit to the ends of it. There's nothing hid from the heat thereof, just like the sun goes through. And the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testament of the Lord is sure. And I think he's referring to that there's something here showing the testimony of God. So you got all this 12 labors of Hercules going through the 12 labors. You know, it's all these mythologies that formed. But through the 12 zodiac signs. Uh, here, about the sun. Malachi 4. But you that fear, 4 verse 2. But you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness, S-U-N, not S-O-N. Some people use this for symbol of Christ. Son of righteousness, even some hymns, son of righteousness is in there. Son of righteousness, arise with healing in his wings, shall go forth, grow up as calves of a stall. And that you shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet, and that day I shall do this to the Lord of hosts. Sun with wings, that was a symbol of the swastika. Weird. Egyptian sun disk, overcome with wings. You know, the Ankh of the Egyptians, and Asta, the symbol of life, the Syrian sun disk. A lot of turn into pagan gods and things like that. Okay, but there we got it. Pretty weird, it's in the Bible. Sun with wings, that's the swastika. I'm not no neo-Nazi, I'll tell you that. But you're saying that Jesus is the swastika, the sun with wings? Well, that's what it sounds like. He's son of righteousness. Okay. The sun with wings. That was a symbol of the Druidic uh, Holy Spirit would descend, and the sun with wings was called a wan. And it was usually drawn, if you see in Apollo's, I wish I had a picture of it, uh, Apollo on a sun chariot, who would have a, a circle disc with a swastika in the middle with wings. The swastika, all things a Nazi symbol, oh, God forbid, was a symbol of the sun and the sun god. And it was symbol of the chariot of Apollo going through the zodiac signs throughout the year. Now, in Genesis 1, now, where in the Bible say that God made the stars for signs and for seasons and things like that? Come on. There are no zodiac signs. Well, let's look. Genesis 1, verse 14. God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide this day from the night. Let them be for the signs, for the seasons, and for the days and the years. First, let them be for signs. There, zodiac signs. In divine season, you could tell what time your crops, and, and even a lot of these megalithical structures like pyramids and Stonehenge, you show the changing of the solstices and equinox, keeping track. Well, that's probably what a lot of this was in the beginning, and it turned to superstition. There's even books written about, you know, Stonehenge Dakota, Bonnie Gaunt, show the gospel in Stonehenge, or the pyramid decoded, and things like that. I believe that stuff, but I don't want to get into that. Okay, let's try Job 38, talking about the zodiac. It's actually mentioned in the Bible. So, you know, these kind of things. Job 38. Here, we'll start here in verse 31. Can those bind the sweet influence of the Pleiades? That's in the heavens, constellation. Or ban the Rhine, or loose the bands of Rhine. Hey, that's the constellation. What's that doing in the Bible? Ooh, it's there. Can those bring forth the Maseroth in its season? You look in the Hebrew, the word Maseroth means zodiac, or from the word zoon, like zoo, like animal, 12. It means zodiac. In a season, or can those guide Arcturus with his sons? That's the big little dipper, the big bear, little bear, Arcturus and his sons. Notice, though, the ordinance of heaven, can those set the dominion thereof in the earth? Okay, so there's some kind of thing going on here. And I read in Psalms 19, if you look here, I'm going to make a reference here, go back, I'm going to compare something here, I'm going to show, I believe Paul's referring to a reference given to mankind, to the heathen, that is shown through, uh, it's relating, quoting from verse Psalms 19, and we're going to go to Romans 10. Okay, right, I think it's 1017. Here it is. 
So then faith come by hearing, 1017, and hearing by the word of God. But I have I, but I say, he's talking about people around the world. Have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went to all the earth and their words into the